Can I help you with something? You want to do... <laughs> Straight line. The best news is it's Wednesday. And with a gray sky on a Wednesday, odds favor blue sky on a Saturday. <laughs> I think we have another day with more questions than answers. We watched the wind shift here yesterday morning. Just one of the most spectacular temperature changes we've ever witnessed. Oh, wait, breaking news. There's a cardinal on the top of the green tree. Can you see him right there? And then there's an egret there. So we've got a cardinal and an egret. Back to the weather. So what I, what I did not have was a wave of pollen because my air came in from off the water. But yesterday, the pollen wave that swept from Boston all the way to practically Springfield, Massachusetts was extraordinary. I think David Epstein did a great job saying it was a confluence of horticultural and meteorological events. The pine pollen was just ready to be lifted off its catkins and it just accumulated in the air. So by the time it got to Worcester County, it was so thick. It was almost frightening. Anyhow, I'll show you an example of that pine pollen after uh, I'm done talking here. Oh yeah, what else? <laughs> How did we get thunderstorms last night on the cold side of the front? Yesterday was a record 95 degrees at Brainerd Field. Just saw a bumblebee in Hartford, Connecticut. Beat the old record, I think, from 2013. How could we get thunderstorms on the cold side of that front? Well, it was still warm aloft. The cold air was very shallow. It came in at lowest levels of the atmosphere from the east. And I'm going to retweet Michael McCormick's time lapse of Boston. You could see low-level winds were coming in off the ocean. Upper-level winds were coming from the northwest. He's watching a bee there. And so technically, we were still in the warm air mass, even though the temperature was only in the lower 60s. It was very shallow. Cold air is more dense than warm air, so we had the shallow cold air undermining the warm air, which was still thick enough and unstable enough. And all you got to do is get a, a wave below pressure develop on that boundary. That's upper level energy, I always used to love to call it. And that's what we had yesterday. Well, last night. Yeah, and that's another thing. It was at night. So Fenway Park's right over there. I was watching the lightning, hoping for uh, lightning to strike on the Red Sox. <laughs> they were still on, uh, had no runs in the eighth and ninth inning. Gave it a run there in the ninth inning, but the thunderstorms missed to the west. So from Fitchburg to Norwood to Plymouth, we picked up a third of an inch of rain last night and nighttime thunderstorms in the cool air mass. It's just so many things yesterday. I spent some time in the garden. I just weeded that top level. You wouldn't believe how many weeds that I missed. Spend an hour and it doesn't look like anything got done. And also in the tomato plants. If you take off your suckers, that is, when the tomato grows, a branch forms, then another branch forms above that branch. That's called a sucker. Uh, you will get tomatoes to form on that, but I think if you take off the suckers, you're gonna get a higher quality, lower quantity tomato. And you can see all these buds here. Those are the sweet 100 cherries. And I put them close to the walkway because you can reach right in there and eat them, try and get them before the rabbits, which is quite the challenge. Uh, pretty much nothing in my rain bucket. Temperatures, 62 outdoors. It's 71 indoors. There's not a lot of wind. There's not much sun, so we'll probably be cooling it indoors today. Don't anticipate having to turn on the heat, at least for a couple days. We have a triple point low going by today. That is where a occluded front meets a cold front meets a warm front. And there's a good chunk of rain coming into Vermont right now, even with some thunder, but that's gonna to tend to fall apart. And then a new batch of weather is gonna develop. And it looks like we may have showers, maybe with some thunder again uh, this evening and tonight. National Weather Service does have us in a slight uh, risk zone in Western New England for severe weather closer to the warmer air. And in Maine, it's just beautiful and sunny today where it was so cloudy yesterday, beautiful sunny. So it's probably a little bit warmer in Maine. We have an omega block in the atmosphere. Look at that anomalous cold with a low pressure stalled near Labrador, Newfoundland. And then you get another one over Northern Ontario and the cold air actually goes far enough south 
that it's 38 degrees in Denver, Colorado, with a winter weather advisory in effect on I-70 just outside of Denver on this first day of June, the beginning of meteorological summer. We had Agatha go into the coast of Mexico. Not a lot of damage reported from what I hear so far, and now that's going to go back into the Gulf of Mexico as just sort of a trough of low pressure that... The Euro says does regenerate into a, a cyclone, whether it's a weak tropical storm or something stronger, it's hard to say, Saturday in Florida. And then there's Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday. It's going to pretty much race, I think, off of North Carolina, maybe right over Bermuda next week. So another long one. I'll leave you after this with a shot of that pollen, which hopefully is going to get washed away. One to three inches of rain are forecast over the next uh, 10 days here in the New England area. All right. That's plenty for now. Lots of images of waves of pollen in the air today. And I thought we were almost done with it, but I think it must be that stuff right there. Should I even shake it? Is this gonna hurt? Kind of. Let's do that again. Yeah, that's it, pine. Another week, hopefully it'll be a lot better. Can you see me now, Rex?